sisters god bless you hope your night or day is going good i wanted to talk about the verse blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled i've noticed a lot of false teachers use that verse and then they won't actually tell you how you actually are made righteous they won't rightly divide it with the rest of the scripture to show other passages about righteousness to show how we are made righteous in the sight of god how we are filled when we come to jesus what they mean by hungering and thirsting after righteousness is that you stay in a constant state of spiritual starvation for your right standing, for having righteousness before God. They want to give you the impression that just as someone who would be starving for water and for food and they're destitute of that very thing and they need that but they don't have it, so you should be hungering and thirsting for something that you don't have as well. And of course, if that was the only verse in the Bible about righteousness, that would be what one was left to think that, well, we just don't have righteousness yet. We should hunger and thirst for it till we finally get it. And in a lot of people's minds, they'll be thinking, well, I'll finally get it when I get my resurrected body and I am in heaven. But till then, I'll hunger and starve the rest of my life for this need that I don't have. So I'll live in this constant state of spiritual destitution. And a lot of times when I hear false teachers quote that, First, they don't even quote it in its entirety. They just said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And that's all they usually say. They don't say the promise of God that comes with it. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But what we find out from the rest of Jesus' statements in the Gospels and also from the Gospel that when we come to Jesus, we are filled. We are filled with his righteousness. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So if you've ever hungered for righteousness, if you ever hungered for a right standing before God because you recognized you were a sinner and you were deplete of those things, you realized in and of your own standing you're a sinner and you're not righteous, and so you hungered for righteousness. Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Not may be filled or might be filled, but they shall be filled. So the question is, is when are they filled? Well, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. Jesus says, when we believe in him, we shall never hunger. We shall never thirst again, which means that you've been filled. See, according to the gospel and scripture, the qualifier to be filled with righteousness is to come and to believe in Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes shall never thirst. The one who comes shall never hunger. The one who believes shall never thirst. Concerning righteousness, and we can see that that's what is laid out very clearly in the New Testament concerning the gospel. That God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. See, it says the righteousness of God. We have the righteousness of God. You can't be filled with any more righteousness than the righteousness of God. When you have the righteousness of God, you are maxed out in terms of righteousness. Your righteousness is at 100% on the righteousness meter. God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So when it comes to righteousness, God is letting us know that we're not partially filled or a little bit filled that maybe we got a little snack concerning righteousness, but we haven't really been completely satisfied. We haven't been completely filled. We still got some lingering hunger pains for righteousness. Jesus is letting us know that's not the case, that we have been filled. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. The only qualifier is coming and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're filled with God's righteousness. Notice Romans chapter 3, verse 22. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus, upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. That we're collectively and equally made righteous, satisfied and filled with God's righteousness, maxed out with God and perfect righteousness. What the scripture is letting us know is that we don't have to hunger and thirst for a right standing with God anymore through Christ. 
And because we have been filled and we will no longer hunger and thirst for a righteousness or a right standing with God, again, we don't have to look to anything else. We don't have to look to ourselves or anything outside of Christ. We simply look to the bread of life. See, when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. He's letting us know that we have an eternal righteousness. If you didn't have an eternal righteousness, then at some point you would begin to hunger and thirst again. But Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst, letting us know that we have an eternal righteousness. This is clarified even more in the New Testament when Paul said, how much more were those who receive the abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in this life through the one Christ Jesus. So the scripture says through the abundant provision of God's grace, we receive a gift of righteousness. And the scripture says the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. Romans chapter 11, verse 29. So once we receive this gift of righteousness, it's inexhaustible. We have it forever. It's eternal. It never ceases. And this is exactly how Jesus described the righteousness that we would have when we came to him and believed in him. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. Those who have hungered and thirst after righteousness and have come and believed in Jesus have been filled according to his promises and have been filled with an eternal righteousness. How much more will those who receive the abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in this life through the one Christ Jesus and the gifts and callings of God are irrevocable. So we have an eternal righteousness. This righteousness doesn't derive out of self. It doesn't originate out of self or through law performance or behavior. This righteousness, according to scripture, just comes by faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 says, May I be found in him having a righteousness not of my own which comes through the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus Christ, even the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So when Paul says, May I be found in him not having a righteousness of my own which is through the law, the law would reference God's moral expectations and obligations. And Paul says, may I be found in him not having a righteousness of my own, which comes through the law. So when he references himself, not of my own, he's saying not of my own performance, not of my own efforts. So the righteousness that we have is not through our own ability and power through keeping the law that we are made righteous, but through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the avenue by which God has made us righteous. And it's completely independent from ourselves and from the law. As Paul said, I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So a lot of these false teachers that use this verse, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they often make you think that it's your law performance. It's your ability and your performance under the law. You know, you have to hunger and thirst after the righteousness. You got to try real hard so that eventually you can become righteous under your own power and ability. But when you have that mindset, you nullify the grace of God. I do not nullify the grace of God, for if righteousness or my right standing with God came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. So the law is not the avenue by which God makes us righteous. The law is the avenue by which God just shows us that we're guilty. Whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law that the whole world will become guilty before God and every mouth would be stopped. So the law is just an avenue that shows us that we're guilty. It just shows us that we're unrighteous. And so to be filled with righteousness, according to scripture, all we have to do is believe in Jesus, as he said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And when we believe in Jesus, the scripture says in Romans chapter four, verse five, to the one who doesn't work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. So we don't have to work under the law to try to get righteous, because if we do, we'll nullify the grace of God. So we just have to believe in Jesus. To the one who doesn't work, that's referencing the works of the law, but believes on him, that's referencing Jesus, who justifies the ungodly, that's a non-guilty verdict. His faith is accredited to righteousness. So the ungodly person is declared righteous and justified in the sight of God simply by faith in Jesus Christ, independent from working under the law. And if you go back to the law to try to fill that hunger and thirst for righteousness, then you nullify the grace of God. I do not nullify the grace of God, for, for if my satisfaction for hungering and thirsting after righteousness came through the law, then Christ died needlessly. 
See, there's a lot of people who stand under the banner of Christianity that say, I'm hungering, thirsting after righteousness. I'm hungering, thirsting after righteousness as though Christ is not their right standing before God and their righteousness. And they say they believe in Jesus Christ, but they go around acting as though they're hungering and starving for righteousness. And they act as though the way they're satisfying that need for righteousness is through their performance, through their efforts, through the law, through their good works. And they can demonstrate a lot of zeal as they try to satisfy their own personal need for righteousness. But because they're not looking to Christ and they're looking to themselves and their performance and outside of Christ for another avenue to become righteous, according to Scripture, they have not submitted to the righteousness of God. As Paul said, I testify about them, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness or seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So people who are ignorant of God's righteousness can often have a lot of zeal. They have a lot of zeal for God, but not according to knowledge, not according to what the scriptures teach about righteousness, that number one, man isn't righteous. There's none righteous, no, not even one. Jesus said, no one is good but God alone. So when God looks throughout human history from his omniscient perspective at every human heart, mind, and action, he declares in his sight that there's none righteous, no, not even one. And in light of that, the only righteousness that actually exists is God's righteousness, and he bestows it upon those who believe, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Christ Jesus upon all and unto all who believe, and there is no difference. So the only righteousness that actually exists in reality is God's righteousness. He gives it to those who believe, but those who are ignorant of that seek to establish their own righteousness, according to Scripture. And seeking to establish their own righteousness, they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. When you believe in Jesus Christ, you get his righteousness, and the law comes to its end in terms of trying to be made righteous and trying to be justified. The law could never do that. It was never for that. It was only for you to be found guilty and unrighteous so that it would be a schoolmaster to lead you to faith in Christ. The law was a schoolmaster to lead us to faith in Christ. But once you've been justified by faith, you're no longer under the schoolmaster. See, when he says, I testify about them that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. One of the things that they don't understand oftentimes is the functionality of the law, that the law is merely a schoolmaster to show us that we're guilty so that it would lead us to faith in Christ, we would be justified by faith, so that we would no longer be under the schoolmaster. Those that have a lot of zeal about God, but not according to knowledge, oftentimes are completely ignorant about the functionality of the law. They believe the law is there for them to be made righteous, but Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. See, when someone is standing under the banner of Christianity and trying to get their right standing before God through the law, trying to get their righteousness through the law, that's a sign they don't believe. Because if they believed in the gospel that Jesus is their right standing before God, that he is their righteousness, they would know that the law has come to its end. Only for those who have truly believed has the law come to its end. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. That's one way you can usually identify a true believer. If somebody is looking to the law for their righteousness, it's because they don't believe. And if you look to another person who is not appealing to their law, to the law for their right standing or the righteousness before God, but they're looking to Jesus, and then you know they actually believe. And when we have believed, we have been filled according to Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus lets us know the qualifier for being filled. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. And we see very clearly from the gospel that when we believe in Jesus, we're filled with his righteousness, God's righteousness. It's an eternal righteousness that we didn't have to work for. We collectively and equally share it. And it's solely on the basis of faith in Christ alone. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. I hope this clarified things for that verse. Uh, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. God bless you. Peace to you and take care.